Clerk, I'd like to welcome right. our witnesses and congratulate them on their commitment and their dedication to the work and to assure them that the whole country is listening and learning uh, from the, the way that they present their, the facts. And I just want, if I may, ask some questions in relation to the number of people who don't turn up for testing. And this morning we were told by the HSE, and if I can give you a direct quote, uh, they refer people for day zero tests and day seven. Somewhere between 70 and 80 per cent of people will show up for day zero and occasionally gets closer to 85. And on the day seven tests, it is closer to 50 per cent who, who don't turn up. Now, I, I think that's a very high figure, and we weren't, uh, I, we weren't given that figure in July when I asked the same question. So could you comment on that issue, please? And uh, acknowledging at the, at the outset that 98 per cent of all tests are negative, and that in itself is reassuring. And that's why we need to make sure these people who don't turn up that they are tested. So, Deputy, I think this is a particularly important question in the context of um, recent public commentary. Um, and the reason it's of particular importance is that, of course, we're proponents of testing. Of course, we want people to turn up for their day zero and day seven test. That's absolutely vital. Uh, and we are looking at alternative testing modalities, uh, particularly for a day seven test, that might be uh, less uncomfortable than the traditional test that we're using at the moment. Uh, but what I would say is that, regardless of that test result, uh, it doesn't change what people need to do. If you're a close contact of a confirmed case, you need to restrict your movement for 14 days. Uh, so yes, we want more people to come forward for testing. Uh, and in particular and separately, what we really want, what, what's more important than anything, is that if anybody has symptoms, that they don't take the traditional approach, which is to wait and see how it goes for a couple of days, but instead to come forward immediately, to put your hand up, ring your GP, identify yourself as having symptoms, and get a test. That, that is the way, in the first instance, that we will control the spread of this disease and it will protect individuals and their families. Can I, yep. Can I just ask a point that there is commentary from some doctors in the, in the media that uh, if I say that people who went to them with, with symptoms uh, didn't go for the test even though they were recommended to do so, what happens to those persons? Do, you know, how are they followed up if they... Is that separate to the people who are at close contact of, of another party. Are there two different figures there? So you're, you're, you're offered a day zero and day seven test if you are, if you've been identified as a close contact of a confirmed case. So I, I believe the information given this morning was that 80 per cent of people who are identified as close contacts are coming forward for the day zero test, but that just about 50 per cent are coming forward for the day seven test. Um, but I suppose my message is that regardless of that test result, which is not a negative, you're not, it doesn't mean you don't have it if it comes back. It simply means it's not detected at the time the test is taken. So the test is merely one additional tool in our armory in terms of controlling the spread, uh, but it doesn't change the clinical outcome or it doesn't change what people need to do at an individual level. Well, the only difference is that if you do unfortunately happen to be positive, if you had to, in other words, if you get the illness after your first test, is negative. Uh, you know, how do you follow the, you know, what, what, I think, what analysis do you do basically on the, this cohort of people? I understood earlier that there was, that you were going to try and, not you personally, but you're trying to identify this group or their particular cohort, you know, and there is some evidence and it's only, uh, I've been speaking to somebody who, who does the contact tracing and they're aware of, of a small number of people, I want to stress a small number of people uh, who don't turn up because uh, their, their presence in the country may, might not be regularised in terms of their, uh, you know, the right to live here and so on. I don't know if you've any use in relation to that. Have you any evidence of that? Yeah, I misunderstood your question. Yes, so uh, the, the, there's, there's two elements, I think, that have been identified by our public health colleagues in the HSE. The first is that younger people um, and then conversely, uh, much older people um, are, are less likely to come forward for the, days, the day seven test. Uh, but the other uh, element that, that has been identified is that there's a cohort of people who don't want to come forward for testing 
uh, because of the potential economic implications of that for them. Uh, and so that's why we made specific recommendations around that at NEFIT a number of weeks ago now that, that really, um, first of all, the test itself, we, and, and to take the, the earlier uh, question, uh, the test is free, the consultation is free, uh, but beyond that, we need to ensure that anyone who does test positive and has to, has to isolate our contacts who have to restrict their movements, that they don't have any fear in relation to their employment uh, after the 14 days, and indeed that they'll be uh, given adequate compensation for the 14 days that they are off work. Uh, economic circumstances simply Simply cannot be a barrier, to, or simply should not be a barrier uh, to people coming forward and getting tested. Thank you, Dr.